who are now live. Hi, everyone. You get to check out these guys working on John today. And Kyle is going to explain what's going on, and so is Brandon. They are just kicking butt and stimulating John's brain. So here we go. All right, so there's a, a lot of times with brain injuries, you'll see that they can have like contractors or retained primitive reflexes. And so Dr. Crawford and I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you an app that we like to use and it's called Recognize. And so for the first, what we're gonna do is for the foot. Um, so what we're gonna have John do is he's gonna have to differentiate whether this is gonna be a left or right. So we're gonna apply some sort of sensory stimulus, for example, to the foot. Um, Dr. Crawford told about the lasers here so um, we use this app and then John's gonna Do say what? Yep. It's gonna recognize he's gonna determine whether this is a left or right foot. So you ready? Tap it. And so we use this finger here to try to help out again with the brain's awareness of, of controlling the foot. And so it's pretty neat because after we do this, the sensation and pain and coordination starts helping out. And then if you want to talk about the laser placements and what you're doing. Yeah, so basically while he's doing that, we're activating those brain networks, you know, on a cognitive level. He's having to recognize, you know, which foot is, you know, left and right. But we're bringing sensory, we're bringing tactile awareness uh, to the area of the body that we need to activate more of. And again, I'm working on these primitive reflexes, right? So I've got the vibration on the bottom of the foot, but then I'm also using the laser and I'm going through acupuncture meridians, uh, but I'm also bringing in blood flow and stimulating <clears throat> the area of the body that we're trying to bring awareness to. And before we did this, we actually used uh, some additional tools to actually address some of the scar tissue that's been built up in the foot uh, to, again, just bring in more blood flow, bring in more awareness. Uh, that scar tissue will impede electrical conductance in the foot. and so. We did that and then we did some electrical stem and again now we're bringing more spatial awareness to his extremities here and what's neat about this app is that it'll give you a percentage of accuracy and so we've been doing this but so john just scored a hundred percent uh recognition on the left foot uh which is amazing which again he's going to get better control so john do us a favor will you show us will you will you move your toes for us can you show them there you go move your feet so it's just really neat because if someone has a lot of pain, this can help out reducing their pain. What you also notice too is, is that a lot of times with brain injuries, you'll notice that they could have like a discoloration in the foot due to lack of circulation. So applying vibration and laser or increase in blood flow, you increase blood flow, you're gonna start activating these nerves. Um, and yeah, you're gonna start getting better control of the foot. Um, now again, the same thing happens and applies, we can do the hand. So, you know, we're working on John's left hand as well. Um, so there's also, again, there's a hand, um, an app for that. We're gonna do the same thing. So John, go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and have you do the head. So to, with this, is it left or right hand? And so up here in the brain while he's doing that, so we're activating certain networks that are mapping that side of the body, right? So what we wanna do is also laser those parts of the brain as we turn on those networks, right? So we know that laser and light therapy have a greater effect and influence on networks that are more metabolically active. And so if we're trying to, to you know, bring awareness to the, or trying to rehab these networks, we're gonna turn them on, make them more metabolically active, and then use laser and light therapy over those networks so we can have a greater influence on them. And so that's what we're doing here. So. A lot of times with brain injuries, you know, we see this, that they'll start, you know, people will just try to start trying to stretch the hand and stretch the arm or stretch the leg. Um, and it's kind of challenging because of the tone, the spasticity is so high. Awesome, great job. So here again, if we can determine that there's a right brain deficit based off of looking at MRI findings, or if we turn around and we start checking like out, for example, for us, we look at the nasal labial folds, we look at the eyelid, we look at the soft palate when someone says ah, we look to see if there's any type of um, vagal deficit on that side. Uh, we also look at muscle tone on the opposite side of the body. And then we also check eye movements. So if I wanna look at the right side of the brain, I can actually look at slow movements called pursuits to the right, and I can look at fast movements from the center to the left side, which is called a saccade, and then I can do 
diagonal pursuits having John look from the bottom left to the top right. Those are all right brain functions and we use computer software to actually analyze the, these movements. And what we find is, is these are deficits. And so one way we rehab is if we understand the right side of the brain needs, uh, needs stimulation, we apply all these sensory input into the brain. And then what happens is we get better control of the foot or better control of the hand. We get a reduction in pain, a reduction in spasticity. Um, and it's just using proper sensory stimulation. And another thing that we do too is we'll use smell. So smell has direct access to the brain. And if we want to activate the right side of the brain, uh, which is going to do with posture and pain, um, it's going to suppress perseverations and involuntary movements. Um, we can place um, like peppermint on the right collar of the shirt. And then Dr. Crawford got into using a, um, an essential oil called Vagal 2.0. And so we'll place this on the right collar on the right nostril. And this is just all different type of sensory stimulations that we'll do um, to help influence the right side of the brain. And it's cool because it's going to translate into better control and reducing frontal release signs or primitive reflexes. And if I can just, we also use taste, right? So taste is huge. Um, and a lot of these primitive reflexes are actually coming from the lower parts of the brainstem, especially the pons and the medulla. Uh, and so whenever we use taste, that actually will go down in synapse and increase blood flow in an area called the solitary nucleus in the medulla. Um, and that's what the, you know, kind of like the basement of the, the brainstem. And so basically we can have a big impact on those lower parts of the medulla, the, the brainstem. The cool part about that is you know, a lot of times with brain injury, um, people have trouble regulating heart rate, breathing rate, that kind of stuff. And so whenever we use taste, that can actually influence um, those centers that control heart rate and breathing rate uh, in the medulla and so you can help bring down a heart rate or increase you know respiration or whatever you need to do but again it brings in blood flow into those areas of the brainstem that we're trying to target because of these primitive reflexes so I love using taste a whole lot I'll use frankincense oil you know frankincense oil it increases oxygenation in the brain by up to 25 percent uh, is what some studies say um, I'll also use that Vagal 2.0 oil. I'll use that on the tongue as well. So, you getting some hemi-stem going? Yeah, and another awesome app for especially PTs and OTs and even some functional neurology or chiros that are listening. Um, we also like to use, it's called a hemi-stem. It's commonly used in stroke rehabilitation to help improve uh, hemi-neglect um, or even you know, visual um, spatial mapping issues. So, for example, a right brain deficit, we like to use the color blue and green. And so um, what I'll have John do is just looking straight ahead, look straight ahead, and then we'll put this right here in his lower left visual field. I actually flip it this way. And again, the right brain, what happens is, is if I'm looking at diagonal eye movements, you'll see that they can have a deficit in the lower left visual field. And then you could see possibly some stuff in the upper right. So if I'm doing eye movements to improve the, the right brain, I'll do stuff like this. I'll have John follow this with his eyes. So these are just some kind of cool little applications that you can do, um, you know, to improve a right brain deficit or a right brain injury. Or if someone's listening and they have a child who has, you know, behavior problems that have ADHD, um, autism, or even Asperger's, um, which again, clinically, this has been showing that there's a lot of issues or functional disconnections in the right side of the brain. So you can use sensory input, for example, doing like coordinated movements like figure eights with the left side of the arm. You can use a metronome, which is a rhythmic sound. Um, and you can have, for example, John try to clap the stuff coming from the left ear. So the left ear is gonna go to the right side of the brain. And that helps out with rhythm, can help out with anxiety issues. Anything else you wanna add? No, man, I think we covered quite Sweet. a bit. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys, um, if people that are watching this video um, Dr. Crawford and I and Dr. Miller, we do have private practices. We also do virtual training and consults. Uh, we do this stuff with practitioners. We do it for nursing home organizations. We have patients that we virtually treat all over the world. Um, but our goal is just to really kind of educate people because this is uh, a lot of different therapy. Um, but what's really interesting is that it's backed by research. Um, there's all these research articles that support everything that we do. And uh, it's all, you know, results. And we get results, we get great results. Uh, Dr. Crawford works a lot with anoxic brain injuries. I typically see a lot of kids with uh, developmental delays, 
um, nonverbal autism, and um, yeah, and then brain injuries. So, um, any, I mean, is there anything? Nah, man. I mean, I think what you said there at the end is really important to know that you know this stuff may look kind of weird and and new and different and all that kind of stuff, but the thing about it is sometimes we need new and different because it's all about results. And if we're getting results and the research proves that what we're doing is number one, safe, and number two, effective, then why not implement it? You know, the, the world needs this stuff. We, we, we're seeing lives change on a daily basis. And so, you know, that's the exciting part. It's just seeing lives change, you know, all day, every day. And it's just, it's amazing. Absolutely. So we'll into this. If you guys want any information about this stuff, reach out to Dr. Crawford, myself, or Dr. Malilo, and we'd be glad to help you guys kind of get you in the right direction. Thank you all so much. And here's Kai over here. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Bye. That was like a fire hose. I know. I got to see if I can.